Do Indian ringnecks make good pets? Do they get along with other birds? <laughs> Hi, guys, welcome to My Bliss. I'm the author of The Pair of Bliss Bond. I'm Kaylin, and I'm here with Milo, my Indian ringneck. Now, let's see, the background is so light, and Milo's pretty light, too. Hmm. Come on, Milo. There you go. Milo is a female Indian ringneck. Indian ringnecks are sexually dimorphic, which means that you could see that her head is a lighter color, but you could see that for an Indian ring neck, there's like no ring on her neck. So that makes her a female, which was also confirmed with DNA. Not that it needed to be, but she was young, and <clears throat> it takes about, oh, the first year, year and a half or so for that ring to come out. So that means that when Indian ringnecks are young, when they hatch all the way to about a year, year and a half, you could say that they're sexually monomorphic, meaning that you look at them and you can't see the color difference, so you can't tell which gender they are. Do Indian ringnecks make good pets? Well, what I love about Milo as a pet is that in addition to being stunning and being intelligent, uh, Milo is very loving with me. That behavior is like she thinks I'm her mate, which I'm not. That's the problem. Um, Milo is so intelligent that some of our bird cages that have doors with a little disc that you have to slide in order to open the door. And of course that, so that the parrots don't get out. <sighs> it, sometimes my mom and I have a hard time getting it to open. I had someone helping me clean cages. He couldn't figure out how to open it. Milo can open it from the inside of the cage or the outside. Like, really? <laughs> so, She's smarter than some people and more nimble than some other people. Um, so Milo's kind of like awesome and fascinating. However, um, she is not a talker because Milo is female. And if you have seen the Indian ringneck video where the Indian ringneck is going, gotta feed the babies, which is like the cutest thing ever. Milo doesn't say that, and I don't think she ever will, because being female, generally speaking, Indian ringnecks are not talkers. The males are, but not the females. With this species, it is a matriarchal um, setup, and that means that Milo calls the shots. It also means that Milo is a little mean to anyone that gets in her way <laughs> when it comes right down to it. Indian ringnecks, because they're matriarchal, it, a male versus a female is very different. I'm gonna say that with green cheek conures, male versus female doesn't really make a difference. I have timid or sort of um, green cheek conures that defer, they're, you know, they're, they're kind of easygoing male and female, and then probably more so female, but definitely both. And then I have Indian ring, or uh, sorry, green cheek conures that are more assertive and like all over the place for sure and kind of in charge. Generally, that tends to be more of the males, but I definitely see it in both genders. So basically, for example, with green cheek conures, whether you have a male or female doesn't really make a big difference as far as the way you're going to experience your parrot. When it comes to an Indian ringneck, it, I think it makes a colossal difference. People who have male Indian ringnecks, and I don't have one, so I can't really say, but I think that they don't have problems with their Indian ringnecks bullying other parrots. I think they don't have problems with their male Indian ringnecks uh, befriending people as well. I, I'm pretty comfortable saying that Milo's a one-person bird. Um, that's not 100% true. Like, I think my mom can pick her up. Um, she doesn't really like to go to my daughter, but my daughter can pick her up 
them. My husband can pick her up. But she's not like happy to see them and all excited to be picked up by them or be with them. So she really is more of a one person bird. That could be Milo specifically or it could be Indian ringnecks in general and my guess it's the latter. Now Indian ringnecks I think are kind of a problem because when it comes to do they get along with other parrots, I think if you have a male, I know some people who have a male Indian ringneck and they say you know, their, their Indian ringneck gets along with their other parrots. When it comes to Milo, not only does she not really get along with other parrots, but she's pretty intolerant of male Indian ringnecks as well. So one of the problems with Indian ringnecks, which is actually similar to cockatoos, but anyway, is that if I were to get a male companion for Milo, I would have to make sure that I have a big cage. How big? You know, I don't really know. I think it's as big, big, big as you can go. Because Milo will bully, probably hurt, and quite not uncommonly, so I guess quite commonly, like even kill the male. Like seriously, and maybe it's not quite kill, but like really, injure and hurt the male. Yes, that bad. Why? Because the wind blew? Because he wanted to eat food too? I, you know. So that's kind of hard as far as, you know, if you have an Indian ringneck and it's a female, she may not get along with another ringneck uh, and she may not get along with other parrots. Of course, I always say there's exceptions to everything so you never know. Now one way I think that you could get around that and I've seen people who have you know several Indian ringneck and it doesn't you know it doesn't look like the ringnecks are just like rah, 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 going at each other like a wild cat fight. So I think maybe one way around that is um, either making sure that everyone has their own house their own cage uh, and and then when they're out on common ground maybe They'll behave on common ground, not that she does. Uh, and the other way that you might get around that is if your Indian ringneck grows up with other parrots, like they, you know, they're they're hand feeding together, or let's say you get them right after they hand fed, and they're just super young together. That's what Milo's experience was. She had a green sheet conure that she grew up with, and he's he's pretty in your face. Like no one's going to tell Abby what to do. That green she conures, you know, pretty fluffs his feathers kind of thing. He's pretty confident. He's, he doesn't get hurt. Like he, you know, okay. And she also grew up with a um, cockatiel, my girl Luna Love. And when Milo was little, it was so sweet. Like I would spend time with Milo, but Milo would go to Luna Love and go, brr, 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 like, be my friend, be my friend, oh, please be my friend. And we would be like, oh my goodness, she's like being so sweet and she's asking so nicely, Luna, be her friend, Luna Love. And Luna Love and Milo did become friends and they did hang out until Milo became hormonal. When Milo became, don't do that, why'd you do that? When Milo became hormonal, she started to be mean to Abby, the green cheek conure, and even though they were out in, like they all have their own cage, but even though they were out in common territory, Milo started to try to injure other parrots. And I didn't like that. I have seen her right in front of me pull out some of my cockatiel feathers and I'm like, that's not acceptable. And one time Abby was in his cage and Milo was on top of his cage. Or maybe it was, I'm sorry, it was the other way around. Milo was in her cage and so she's being territorial. Abby was on top of the cage, probably like doing nothing, absolutely nothing. And Milo bit his toe and it's like, that's not okay. I am very strict about, this is a flock 
and all of the birds, humans, dogs, and cats in this house should not be in any danger. They should not feel threatened. They, they should feel nice, safe, secure, at home, comfortable, like they have everything they need. They should have their food. There's no, no reason not to have your food, your water, and a place to quietly and comfortably rest. Like that's like a really big thing for me. It's really, really, really important to me. And so when somebody is biting someone else's toe just because they're on their cage, I don't like that. Abby had kind of snuck out and was like somewhere where he shouldn't be, but that's just still not okay with me. So that makes Milo, in my opinion, a hard bird to have. She's not hard as far as she steps up. You could tell that she's sweet with me. <gasps> Look at your pretty wings. That's why she's clipped. She threatens other birds. If you threaten other birds, the least I can do is try to even things up a little by clipping her wings, which are growing out because you can see it sticking out. But, um, you know, I just, I really don't like clipping, but if a bird is hurting other birds, that, there's no question. I just, at that point, I don't, I don't mess around. There's no hurting other birds. Milo is a beautiful, what do they call you? A um, pallid blue? And interestingly enough, she's molting right now. You can see, I don't know why they don't call her baby cloud blue, but she used to be whiter, a little more like her head, not entirely, but a little more. And her color is changing. She's getting a little darker. I think, I really think she's stunning. And now I'm going to try to get her back. So um, I think that's really interesting that after this molt, she's kind of changing colors. Last thing I will tell you is that when she's hormonal, she's aggressive and difficult. And since people often ask about how to deal with a hormonal parrot, I will tell you that for her, I just gave her a nesting box, completely infertile eggs, because you need a male and there is no male. So I let her lay her eggs. I let her sit on her eggs. She sat on them for about a month. She was happy. She wasn't hormonally hurting any other parrot, any other person. So I was happy and now she's off harassing another cage, but this is what she does. So I'm gonna have to wrap it up. All right, as always, thank you so much for watching the ads. It helps me not only bring you more videos, but support, it helps me support my flock. Uh, if you have any questions about parrots, you can comment below. You can comment on parrotlist.com or you can also get Tink's Must Have Parrot Relief, which is a fantastic de-stressor or a great oil in hemp oil so that it helps your parrot get a healthier uh, immune system. Or you can join Parrot Bliss Flock on Facebook and message that way. Thank you for joining me and I'll catch you next time.